Horseback swindler. My environment. It's all calm down. Uh, there is no need for this sort of angry mob. Uh, I know some of you are, are less than thrilled with the results you got from Doc Ernest P. Schnickel's patented guaranteed cure-all elixir, uh, but I assure you the, the side effects just mean that it's working. Four flush and sidewinder. Your dirty dog. Chisler. No good bushwhacker. Butch, Butch Woodson. Just look at the long, beautiful, flowing locks of hair you have now. And imagine how beautiful they'll be when they move from your nostrils to the top of your head. <laughs> and, and, and Felicity, oh, Felicity Colfax, look at you standing there so steady and, and confident without a hint of a tremor as you point that six shooter right at me, <laughs> even though you got hooves where your hands used to be. <laughs> now, now, let's all take a moment before we do something we regret. I, I, I tell you what, uh, let, me, let me tell you a little story. I think it'll clear up everything and put it all in perspective. And if and it doesn't, I will refund every last cent you paid me and you will never see hide nor hair of Doc Ernest P. Schnickel ever again. Now, uh, the title of that story, the title was, uh, hang on, a lot of pressure here. Uh, the title, uh, The Last Shot, of course. <laughs> How could I forget that? You see, this took place out in the booming paradise that is San Francisco. Oh, everything you have heard is true. People go up into the hills, paupers, and they come back rich, rich, rich. Oh, and this one particular night in the most beautiful saloon in all of San Francisco, this one person come walking through the door and uh, turn the heads of everybody. Oh, I am talking about Mavis Farthingsworth. Mavis come walking in and everything went still. Mavis had a a weird look on his eye. He always did, because nobody wanted to mess with Mavis, you see. But Mavis. Well, y'all gonna just stand there, or y'all gonna serve me a drink? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> there you are, sir. Everybody was happy to serve Mavis because they, they really never knew. Was he just that way or was he fixing to shoot them at all times? You got some uh, mighty fine clothes on you. I'm sure you probably uh, struck it rich up in the hills, huh? That's right. Well, are you fixing to try to take my wealth from me? No, 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 no. It's a, it's a nickel a shot, though. All I gotta do is uh, hand you a nickel, huh? Two nickels. Uh, I poured you a second shot. Two nickels. How about you give me one, and this one's on the house. People were always giving Mavis things on the house, just in case. 
Thank you, Mavis. You're welcome. Uh, some of the girls upstairs would like to give you something on the house. <laughs> on the house. On the house? Right up those stairs. Go right up those stairs on the house. Well, I can't say no to that. <laughs> no, Mavis never could say no to a, a good tumble in a house of ill repute. And this particular saloon, the Golden Arm, had the illest repute in all of the city. Well, you might be the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. Why, thank you, Mavis. Coming from you, that, that makes me feel real good. They sat and stared at each other for a little bit, sizing each other up. Mavis taking in how beautiful this young woman was and this young woman taking in, well, whatever it was Mavis was. I wanna make sure Mavis that you're in a good mood and that everything's the way you want it to be. Well, I'm gonna tell you a secret. I'm listening. I don't usually fornicate. I just wanna hear your life story. That sounds good to me. I'm happy to tell you my life story, Mavis. Can you scratch my head while I lay on the bed and you tell me the story though? I just wanna just, just rub my head. If that would make you happy, that makes me happy. <sighs> you see, that's why Mavis was the way he was. He had struck it rich up in the hills, but he didn't have nobody to just talk kindly to him and scratch his head. And as that young woman just told her story and stroked his hair, a smile finally come across Mavis's face, something nobody had ever seen and nobody thought they'd see. And so that's when I decided to come here. After my ma and pa told me to strike out on my own and that's what I did. Mavis, you're, you're not upset, are you? I was just such an inspiration. Such a beautiful story. Mavis, I see that, that big gun you got on yourself there. And I hear that you're a real sharp shooter, that you've been shooting up everything, everything in this town. Maybe... Maybe it's time for you to, to give up shooting. Maybe you shouldn't shoot anymore. He thought about it. Thought about all the ill that shooting had brought him. Thought about all the ill that scowling had brought him. And he pulled that pistol out of his holster and he set it on the bed. Well, that young woman stroked his hair as the sun was coming up and he smiled, never noticing that she picked up the pistol from the bed and she pulled the trigger and blew a hole clean through him. killed my ma and pa and this gun is gonna shoot no more that was the last shot <laughs> And 
And now, now we're we'll again. again. Of Mavis Farthingworth. So, I just want y'all all to think about that for a moment. Y'all, y'all may not have the best opinion of me, but my intentions is good. And just think about how you're gonna feel if if you put a hole in me just when I'm about to turn around and do something nice. Wouldn't you feel terrible? Now I want y'all to think about that. Think about it real good and hard. Well, I move my wagon closer to the edge of town. What? What? Well, yes, I'm Evelyn Lamore, advice and love columnist syndicated in 65 different newspapers across this nation. What, a feature article on me? <laughs> oh, strictly off the records. Advice, I can give it, but I can't take it. <laughs> uh, engaged four times, married five, divorced three, <laughs> and family problems? Well, my parents wanted to disown me when I was four years old. <sighs> can't blame them. <sighs> and money? <sighs> I just can't seem to hang on to this stuff. <sighs> <sighs> but that's not why you're here, is it? <laughs> you want to know about the letters, right? Everyone wants to know about the letters. Well, there's a stack there. Go ahead, pick one up. Hand it to me, and I'll and I'll I'll read it to you. All right. Oh, they give them little titles. Uh, this one's called. Um, let's see. This one's called. Um, hmm. Won't you be my friend? <laughs> Won't you be my friend in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? <laughs> I've never been to Pittsburgh. Have you? <laughs> anyway, dear Evelyn. My name is Sylvia, and I live in Pittsburgh. It's nice to say it a few times. <laughs> Anyhow, this is what happened. One day, while I was out visiting old Mrs. Cleeton, C-L-E-E-T-O-N, Cleeton, old Mrs. Cleeton, well, her nephew came by, imagine that. So she, uh, she's in uh, old Mrs. Cleeton's house and old Mrs. Cleeton's nephew comes by and his name is uh, Paul. <laughs> oh. Paul is my name, my name is Paul. Oh. You're Mrs. Cleet's nephew. Yes, oh. Cleeton, yes. Oh, I'm Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia. Are you staying with your your aunt here? Yes, I am. I uh, I just finished up college, and well, here I am. Uh, I don't really have a plan as far as that goes, but I thought I'd spend some time with my dear old aunt. Well, that is so so good of you, and I'm sure you'll enjoy Pittsburgh. I mean, Pittsburgh has many wonderful offerings. It's, it's the jewel of Western Pennsylvania. That it is indeed. <laughs> well, I wanted to see your aunt because, well, I come to check by her every week to make sure that she doesn't need anything, you know, um, groceries or if she needs me to pick up her mail. But now that you're here, I, I suppose I don't need to do that anymore. I hope I'm not putting you out of a job. We, we <laughs> certainly appreciate everything that you've done, Sylvia. Oh, no, no, of course. I, I've always enjoyed meeting with your aunt. She tells the most fascinating stories. In fact, is she even, is she here? Is she in? Oh, she's upstairs. She's not feeling well, so uh, okay. she's just a little tired. Oh, oh, I see. I understand. Well, I hope it'll pass quickly. Right. I have brought her some soup. Um, perhaps you... Sweet. Oh. <laughs> wow. 
wow, ooh, this looks like it's delicious. <laughs> it's my famous carrot soup. Ooh, well, I might, I might have a spoonful myself. Please do, please do. And uh, if you'd like more, I'll be happy to make more for you. And that was that, Evelyn. I was uh, taken by the young man, Paul, and I thought, oh, how nice that he's there to visit his aunt. Well, not long after that, I got a call from Paul. He called me on my phone at home. I, I hope I'm not bothering you, Sylvia. Not at all, Paul. Is your aunt all right? Oh, yes, yeah, she's fine. She's feeling much better. I think, I think the carrot soup did the trick. I'm so glad to hear that. What can I do for you? I, uh, I was wondering if you'd be interested in going out on a, on a date on Saturday night. <laughs> well, of course. I'd love to show you around. I'm sure you don't have any friends in the town since you were new here. Mm. I'd be happy to meet with you on Saturday. I guess I am a little bit of a, well, a lost lamb, as it were. Well, consider yourself found. I'll meet you Saturday then. All right. Wonderful. So, Evelyn, it was great. We went down to the, the carnival that was had just moved into town, and we walked around there together. <laughs> well, and friend. the gentleman wins a prize. <laughs> I won, uh, well, Paul won a, a wonderful teddy bear for me. Oh, I love it. I love it. Not and later that night, we walked down by the, the, the river bank. And you know, this is when everything changed, Evelyn. Everything changed. What he said next, well, this is what I need help with. I, I really love you. I know we haven't, we haven't met, we haven't been together for very long. We've just gone on one date, but I love you. And I have to tell you something. Tell me something more than what you've just said? Yes. What is it? I, I killed my aunt. Why would you do that? I was so touched by your, your offering of carrot soup and, uh, well, she wasn't feeling well, and I was having a hard time getting her to eat the carrot soup. I just thought it would be rude if she didn't even try it. I so forced you... it into her mouth and holding her on the bed and just trying to jam the spoon in and it got stuck. I tried to pull it out, and you know, her bones are so fractured. And it just spiraled out of control from there. Blood everywhere. I don't know what happened. For a while, I, I, I think I blacked out. I, it was a mistake, of course. I. I want to kill my aunt for the world. You understand. Evelyn, this is my dilemma. I really like Paul, and I'm not quite sure what to do. Oh. Everything you've said is... Why, oh, it's so incredible. I mean, I like you too. And I wanted to be your friend. And I thought we could be friends. And you're saying you love me. And that you killed your aunt. 
But so, I, Evelyn, Evelyn, I, I marched him right to the police station and I turned him in. He turned himself in too. There was no fight whatsoever. And my question is this, now he's in prison. Should I continue to see him and be his friend and possibly one day be his wife? I say, why not? <laughs> why not? Unless she's got other offers. I say, why not? <laughs> anyway, he did that for love, right? That's what I say. <sighs> what? A drink with you? Downstairs in the Biltmore? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> I could always be married once more. <laughs> Hey boy. Yeah, you. Hey. Warner, Warner. I'm on your side, baby. I'm on your side. Just hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> I know exactly where you're coming from. And I know how you can escape. All you got to do is stop looking, listen, and see what you've been missing. You see? I'm from the same plantation that you from. Yeah, take it in. <laughs> Look at me now. I'm the best I ever did it and got away with it, young blood. You see, all you gotta do is take one step towards me and I'll take two towards you. You see, because a slave without instruction is headed for self-destruction. Whoa, 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 whoa. Give me a moment of your time and I promise you I can help you free yourself. I can guarantee it. Now see, you don't gotta say a word because I can't be heard. You understand what I'm saying? I know these parts like the back of my hand. Now, you a little emotional right now. So, hmm. Yes, sir, indeed. How about you uh, listen to a story before I tell you how you could get free? Hmm? Yeah, catch your breath, catch your breath. Connect with me, connect with me now. Connect with me now. We the same, we the same brother. Connect with me now. I'm gonna tell you a story. And the story is called The Dusty Road. And it's about a woman who uh, who was looking for, for 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 great things. She want she wanted to see the she wanted to become rich, and she was willing to do anything for it. She was trying to set herself free, kind of like you. And her name was Patty May. You see, she was from the small town in the Mississippi Delta. But she found her way to the big city. What you doing here in the big city, girl? Excuse me, I'm looking uh, for work. Uh, I'll, uh, I can... Uh... I can clean clothes, I can shine shoes, I can sell newspapers, I can take care of children, I can also uh, groom horses, I can uh, roll cigarettes, and I can, I can dance. 
and sing. And um, can you keep a bar? She was one of the best storytellers that you could ever meet. She 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 would tell people all these things she could do, and she never done them in her life. But she was a fast learner. Sure, I sure I, I can do a bar. I can tend a bar. I, I tended a bar uh, just down in the, in the next county. I tended a bar, and when I was tending the bar, they sold more liquor than anybody had ever seen ever ever never. All right. Well, you're hired because my last girl just left, and I'm in need of help. So, go ahead and put on an apron. And I need you to ten bar right now, and I'll tell you. All right. We get some unsavory characters around here, but you look like you can hold your own. All right. So I'll leave you to it. Okay. Bartender, why don't you come on over here and uh, make me one of the make me one of your special drinks? You got a special drink, bartender? I sure do, sir. Yeah. I call this the Slow River. Yeah. Just make some of this in there, and then. You um, grab one of these, and then there we go. Uh, have a taste of that, sir. That's called the Slow River. Little did she know that the man she was serving was one of the richest men in all of that city. Oh, Excuse me, Mr. Billingsley, sir. Mm -hmm. Would you really be drinking in an establishment like this? I'm more than capable of making you cocktails at home. I know you're capable of it, but there's something about your company that doesn't fill all my needs. I shall be outside waiting to drive you home in the rolls, Mr. Billingsley. Just nod if you need me. I shall be watching through the windows. See, Mr. Billingsley used to be from a small town himself and build himself up all the way to an empire. So he liked being around small folk, remind him of home. Excuse me, sir, I overheard with, is that a chauffeur? Yeah. yeah I, I was a chauffeur. I was a chauffeur once for uh, a Rockefeller. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> You got the small town written all over you. I'm gonna have big town written all over me soon. Well, I like you. you make a nice drink and uh, hey, how how would you like to make uh, some real? Money? Well, like what? He then proposed that she get into stocks. He was, he was making a killing off the stock market and maybe she could get involved because she had what it takes. Sure enough, give it a try. Here's, You're gonna... a, here's a list of some stocks right here. Right. Anyone jump out at you? Oh yeah, the, the, the Maytag stock. I like that word. All right. That's the stock that jumps out at me. Are you gonna, are you gonna front me some money for this? <laughs> I'm gonna give you this money right here. <gasps> Actually, what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna lay it on the bar. Now you could take this money. There's seven hundred dollars there. Oh my. Or I could invest this money in Maytag stock for you. You trust me that much? One way or the other? One way or the other, it's yours. Then you invest it. You invest it in my name because I don't know. Hand me I, your phone there. What? You got a phone behind the bar there. Oh, you got a long this. extension cord on it. Bring it on over here. There it is. Oh. Yeah, it's a heavy one. There you go. <sighs> That's my money, don't lose it. <laughs> lose. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, 700 on Maytag. Yeah. All right. Give him my name, give him my name. <laughs> you gotta give me your name before I give him their name. Patty May, Patty May. 
Yeah, this is going under the Patty May account. Okay. What'd he say? What'd he say? What'd they say? Well, you now own seven hundred dollars worth of Maytag stock. What's Maytag stock for? Well, they uh, they make various uh, washing machines and various all kind of things. Yes. Hey, it just rang right back there. <laughs> How about that? What? Your uh, your stock just doubled. Cause everybody's got dirty clothes. Yeah, well, I've never seen a, a, <laughs> a stock double so quickly. Oh, mm. Right. Well, let me buy you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. I could see the small town starting to wash off of you. That good or bad? Never quite lost all my small town. You can look, see it on me. No, I can see it. I can, I can see it. Don't you want to get rid of that? Smudge it right out, get rid of it forever. Never let anybody see that on you. I don't mind much. I live in a big house. I got all the money I could ever ask for. I have a fancy car or somebody drives me in a fancy car. You can make a lot of money in this world, right? You are. You say that again? You're gonna make a lot of money in this world. Don't lose who you are. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Billingsley, right? I'll, uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Big stack of money for you. I'll see you then. Oh, we say it may be a dusty road to where you want to go, but if you want to stop fearing massa and you want to get your walking papers, dress like me and chase women like me, All you got to do is sign right here. <laughs> For a small fee, Lucifer can set you free. be Mickey's new gal, huh? This is our backstage dressing room. You can set up shop over there. They just called 10 minutes to places, so you better get ready. <laughs> it's a big show tonight. Of course, it's Vegas and every night. It's a big night, but tonight especially, there's a lot of people, a lot of important people that's going to be in the audience. Yeah. You can use this makeup 
It'll cover everything, including that shiner you got over there. Look, uh, I know Mickey's got a temper, okay? But deep down, he's got a good heart. I know, because he's helped me out a lot over the years. My name's Misty. Believe it or not, it's my real name, not my stage name. <laughs> my ma, she said she called me that because she got Misty every time she thought of me. <laughs> Anyways. She and Mickey, they were good friends. They go back a long way and he told her that he'd always take care of me. So after she died, he brought me here, got me a gig dancing the shows, showed me the ropes, saw a lot, learned a lot. Number one lesson, keep your eyes open and your mouth shut and you'll be okay. Hey, 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 you'll be okay, all right? Don't cry, all right? Hey, hey here. Here, 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 all right, don't cry. Okay, you're gonna smear your makeup. All right, look, don't cry. All right, you know what? I'll tell you a story, okay? And I'll make you feel better. Take your mind off of things, okay? All right, I, I got a lot of stories. I've been around the block, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a story, all right? Um, okay, I'm gonna tell you a story. Lucky Lou, it's a story about Lucky Lou, all right? <laughs> Man, Lucky Lou, boy, he was a high roller, let me tell you. He had the best luck wherever he went. It was like he was, he was charmed, even when he was little. You know, he was popular. He got away with everything. And then when he got older, he still got away with everything. Sure. Let it ride, let the whole pile ride. Everybody wanna see me let it ride, huh? Yeah, let it, let me see you. Come on, Lou. 7-Eleven, come on up. Come on, Lou. There it is. There it is. Uh, you know what? Pass the dice back. Let it ride again. Oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, Lou, you're killing oh, God, us. Nobody knew how he did it. But whenever he went into the casinos, he would always break the dealer. He would play blackjack, poker, roulette. Whatever he did, he always won. Well, this didn't make the casino owners very happy. Mr. Montevucci. He was the big time owner. He owned a couple of casinos in Vegas and he had his eye on Lucky Lou. Look, Mr. Montevucci, if you wanna throw me out or, or ban me from the tables, just say so. But you'd have to have a reason, right? I mean, you gotta admit, Lucky Lou brings a lot of traffic to the, to the Gosling Club, huh? Hey, Lou, I must admit, you're kind of like a celebrity. People like a winner, Mr. Montevucci. How about we cut a deal, Lou? I'm listening. How about I let you come here and you eat for free, you sleep for free but the money stays. Hmm. Hear me out, Lou. Hear me out, Lou. Now, and normally, people might not think that this was a good deal, but the thing was, Lucky Lou had his eye on Manavucci's daughter, who was often found at the casinos. So her name was Vera, and he thought, that if he stayed and ate and slept, slept at the Gosling all the time, that would increase his chances with Vera. And that's what he, Lucky Lou wanted. The Manavuchis, the Manavuchis, we have a, we have a long history here. <laughs> Save the cell speech for the suckers. You got a deal. Uh, just make the living quarters the presidential suite, all right? I'll move in today. We got a deal. Hey, Papa. <laughs> Hey, hey Papa, it's me, your little girl. Hey, my little girl, look at you. You're getting bigger every day. I can't help myself, right, Papa? Huh. I can't help myself. I I turn one way, I turn back. You're you're 21. You're you're a woman now. 
hey, mama sent me down here. She, uh, I want to buy a new dress. Will you give me some money? Yeah, anything oh. for you, baby. All right. Hey, uh, Mr. Ice. Vera. Yeah. Hi. Hi, uh, who's this? Lucky Lou. Oh. Charmed. Hmm? Oh. The thing was, Lou was lucky in everything, but for some reason, his luck didn't seem to rub off on Vera. Whatever he did, Vera didn't seem to pay him no mind. Thanks for, the, thanks for the money, Papa. No problem. Uh, you need somebody to go shopping with you, Vera? I'm known for my good taste. Are you kidding me? Did you hear that, Papa? <laughs> Is he kidding? I don't think so. <laughs> Lou wanted to figure out a way that he could have his luck work for him to gain Vera's affections. I'm gonna tell you one thing, Lucky Lou. Yeah, spit it on me. I don't like the way you look at my daughter. And if I hear anything, you know Tony? Tony's gonna break your fucking gagoozies, okay? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I'll get lucky and your daughter will start looking at me. That's funny. I'll talk to you later, eh, alligator? Vera, she had a lot of spirit. She thought she owned Vegas because of her dad, Montevucci, pretty much owned the place. So she would go around spending gambling she didn't have a care in the world i'll buy that diamond yeah sure my father yeah i'm a maravucci <laughs> she would go around spending and doing whatever she wanted getting herself in trouble and the whole time lucky lou would be following and watching from a distance give me that hat lady i want it yeah, i'm a maravucci Gucci. Don't say my name wrong. Hey, hey, why are you looking at me like that? I'm a Montevucci. Hey, oh, oh, oh. Hey, 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 you. You cheap bastard, you do not hit a lady like that, all right? You lay your hands on her again, I will smack you in the next week. You understand? Now get out of here, you, you run. What Lucky Dear Lou didn't know was that Vera had pissed off the wrong guy. His name was Gus. And Gus was part of the rival family of the Bonapartes. Gus Bonaparte was a mean M-O-F. Oh, it, okay, Vera? Yeah, I, I didn't like the way he was... Uh... He was looking at me, so I, I, I called him a dirty name, and then he slapped me. What is that about, huh? I'm a Manavucci. He had no right to do that. Yeah. You want me to walk you home just in case? Yeah. They, they found themselves in a dark alley and no way to get out of town. It was dark, and suddenly it was an unsavory character in the end of the alley waiting for them. Look what we are here, huh? Got a Manavucci and we got Lucky Lou. A lot of money to be made if you make the wrong step. You know, I could uh, maybe help you make a lot of money. I am pretty lucky. Um, Vera, why don't you uh, stand behind me, huh? All right. Okay. You can help me make some money. I'm Lucky Lou. Uh, the bullet is probably going to pass right by me, and, and then everybody's going to hear you took a shot at Lucky Lou, and your, your life won't be worth a plug nickel. Come on, what can I do for you? Let my luck rub off on you a little bit, huh? Hey, I want to see the girl. She's right here. Vera, poke your head out just a little bit. Hey, I'm right here. And look what I got out of Lucky Lou's pocket. Vera, you, you really shouldn't mess with that. I, I got this under control, Vera. 
no reason for this to get out of hand. I'm a Maravucci. I can take care of anything. Yeah, there's, there's no reason for anybody to start shooting, okay? I'm a Bonaparte. I'm a Maravucci. I'm a Bonaparte. I'm a Maravucci. We can all we can all go our separate ways, and nobody has to get hurt. All right. Shots started flying, and Lucky Luke running something. <laughs> Bonaparte. Bonaparte, the MOF went down. And Vera, although with a shoulder injury, was not fatally wounded. But then she saw Lucky Lou. He was on the ground. And suddenly she realized that he had risked his life for her. Lou. Come on, Lou. You're lucky. Come on, Lou. Come on, Lou. Don't, don't die, Lou. Don't. Come on. I'm holding you. I, I got my, I got my hands right on you, right on the wound. It stopped bleeding that way. I'm not. It won't help, Vera. I'm not that lucky. I'm just. I'm lucky enough, though, that I got to spend some time with you. Thank you. She gave him a kiss right then and there before he died. But in that moment, during that kiss, Lucky Lou felt like he was the luckiest man alive. Yeah. So that was his story, Lucky Lou. In the end, he felt like he had lived a lucky life. Places, everyone! Let's go. Let's go. shown up in Father Mahoney's confessional, huh? I haven't seen you since the Winter Carnival. Did you think that being a Catholic was just about that uh, Lutheranism is no way to save your mortal soul, huh? <laughs> uh, Father Mahoney is ready to hear the, so you confess the sins uh, burdening your soul. Uh, you're silent. You must have done something horrible. Uh, you can't shock me, you know. I've uh, I've heard the absolute worst things in here. Uh, maybe if I tell you a story uh, uh, about one of the awful, awful things I've heard in this confessional. Uh, I've so many of them. Oh, it's like they all are bubbling up. Ah, kicking an old lady. Yeah. Hmm. Well, this story, it starts, uh, it actually starts far away from where you would think. It starts in Munich. Yeah, Munich, Germany. Well, you know, there is fella in Munich. That's in the, that's in the uh, Eastern Europe, uh, East Germany. You know. They're godless communists there. Well, there's this German fella. Now he's a good fella, despite being in an awful place. There in Munich. One dream. Sitting in a cafe there, and he's got one dream, and that's to come here. Ah. Inga, 
Fijne Peter Bieter. Dank je. En mijn kinderen verder. Dank. Ze spreken German. Because it's in Munich. No, it happened that while he was there drinking his beer, this, uh, this lovely lady came up to him, an American lady. Good and talk. You may sit if you like. Uh, here, let me get your chair for you. Thank you. There you are. I'm sorry, I don't speak German. I, I'm an I, American. I noticed. Um, I, we can spot Americans very easily here. Uh -huh. My name is Heinrich. Heinrich. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Hello, Heinrich. I'm Lily. <laughs> Likes the flower, yeah? Yes, yes, like the flower. Uh, I hope to go to America someday. That's why my English is so good. Oh, yes, it's very good. Uh, thank you. And you're in the house, you're in the bus, and you're in the house. Thank you. 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 I love hearing German spoken. What did you say? I, I, that I just said thank you. She told me that my beer was ready and the pretzels will be ready in about 15 minutes. Oh. Uh, do you mm. like pretzels, fresh baked? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, may I buy you a pretzel and uh, perhaps a pint of beer? That would be lovely, thank you. Inga. Ah, yeah. Dann schweigen und dort bitte, danke. Ah, dann mit am Onkel. Ah, die. Don't. Well, Lily and Heinrich, they became fast friends. And uh, all the laughter spilled out of both of them. And you could tell that there was something growing there, something burgeoning within both of their hearts. And, and you can actually go up to the top of the Empire State Building and just look out. Yes, yes, you can. Oh, oh. You know, That's Heinrich. Uh, I, no, go ahead. I, well, I was just going to say, I mean, I'm visiting your mother country, and wouldn't it be lovely if you came to visit me in my country someday? I could take you to the Empire State Building. Yeah, it's not so easy to get out of East Germany, I'm afraid. Sir. Yes. Maybe someday. Well, there yeah. was one way you could get out. There was one thing they could do if they wanted to get poor Heinrich out of East Germany. Heinrich, you know, we could dress you up as my grandmother and say that you're my American grandmother. We could get you out that way if you posed as an old lady. That sounds, that sounds good, if it would work. I, I would be very grateful to you, eternally grateful. I would give you everything I have. You don't have to worry about anything like that. Having you come with me back to my home country, that would be wonderful. And if, if you insist, uh, but it must be soon, I am afraid to, Many people watching me since I have expressed my desire to go to America a bit too loudly and a bit too often. Let's do it tonight. Yeah, yeah. Just tell me where to meet you and I will make sure I dress as your grandmother and I will make sure I am very convincing. I will help you. My ticket to leave is tonight and I will have you come with me. Yeah, uh, I will meet you at, what time is your ticket? It is for 1800 hours. I will knock on the door as your grandmother at 1730 hours, yeah? Oh, I am so grateful to you, Lily. So, so grateful. I, I, I must go and prepare now, yeah? Yes, yeah. Now 
can receive like a fool who proof plan. Hello, hello, yeah, it's, it's me. Yeah. Heinrich, yeah, let us go to the airport now. Okay, we're going yeah. there now. You look like an old lady, it's perfect. Thank you. Uh, yeah, next on. Papers, uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you are traveling with? With my grandmother. She's uh, yeah. elderly and very ill. We must board immediately. Uh, her papers? Yes. Where are her papers? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Can I see your eyes? Yeah. yeah here are my eyes. Yeah. All right. We may board. That's okay. <laughs> Donka. Next. Heinrich, this is working perfectly. Uh, it's a dream come true. Yes. And soon we will be en route and you'll be leaving East Germany. Yeah, finally, I can go to America. Oh. Hey, who's that James of Zahorve? The one standing in front of the the door where we board the plane. Yes. I know this person. They are an enforcer for the government that does not want people to leave. <laughs> Just keep walking, Heinrich. Keep walking. And who are you traveling with? My grandmother. Oh. I have a, a granny. Yes, and my granny is very old and she's feeling ill. We need to have her sit down on the plane immediately. Yeah. All right. My granny is old too. I understand. Go quick. Yes, yes. Quick, quick. You hold. Hey, go. They are detained with the person behind us. Okay, good. We're on. We're on the plane now, Heinrich. Here, sit down, sit down. When it seemed like they were home free. I believe we have done it. Yeah? So, Heinrich, we'll be free once the plane starts to move. Oh, yes, of course. Huh. I must stay in disguise. Now, at that moment, there was somebody coming down the aisle. And they'd had a drink. And, uh, well... They happened to kick Heinrich in his shin. That's sorry, young man. Yeah. And every officer on that plane, because there's always a bunch of officers on planes coming out of Germany, you know, they all turned around. And they heard a sound come from 
Heinrich, which wasn't an old lady's house. And they both grabbed Heinrich. And they dragged him off that plane. Oh, it was wonderful knowing you, Lily. Thank you. Heinrich. Lily watched him be dragged across the tarmac. And then he went into a, a little uh, shack they had on the tarmac. And there were a couple of gunshots. <laughs> yeah. And that was all of Heinrich. He didn't make it to Germany. And Lily, well, she took to the drink. She, uh, drunk herself to death because she knew it was her trying to out that killed him. Now, poor Heinrich and Lily they died without saying their uh, their last uh, confession. And they're burning in hell right now. Do you want to burn in hell right now? Hmm. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, four times are you? Hmm. Well, uh, say uh, for our fathers and... Uh, Come back sooner next time, huh? Hmm. All right. Thank you. Thanks. It's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of death. A lot. Yeah, I, I'm really, you know, I, I, uh, there are two stories I didn't get shot in tonight. So I'm kind of, you know, I wanted, I was going for the perfect record. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A any questions from the audience? <laughs> I'd find, yeah, right. <laughs> nice, Basil. It, oh. it's it, it's not a competition basil i just want you to know that <laughs> it is but i i want you to think it isn't that's all yeah great now um my character didn't die in larry's story that was a good story yeah mm -hmm. well that's what happens when you invest in maytag <laughs> yeah. oh. that's great uh yeah so no questions we just want to thank you yes thank you stephanie fantastic music by joshua and i want to thank everybody that's made this run um uh run really smoothly the uh, the casts have been phenomenal uh and the uh all the stuff thank you basil all the stuff that um all the uh what do you call it, visual 
pieces that Ken, uh, Mr. Schnickel there, has done for just, it, it helps so much. That slideshow in the beginning, he put all that together. And then Hillary helping us with um, all the tech that is <laughs> such a tech heavy show. And then of course, Joshua, who's adds the music that puts it all together. It's the glue. Uh, Al Alice asked, you said, thank you. This is my first show. Did you say this is the last one? This is the last one of this format. Uh, we have brand new shows starting next Friday and next Saturday. Um, the Friday show is called Eavesdropping. It's kind of a, um, a random road trip around the Zoomiverse. You kind of drop in on Zoom calls. And uh, Dave, would you like to say what's going on on Saturdays? Uh, Saturdays uh, is uh, Boat Court, uh, which is a... Um... It's an improv show based on um, uh, a show uh, that me and Ken made up that's been on television for 25 years. Um, <laughs> both court. Boat? <laughs> Can't wait. Boat court. Emphasis on both words. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. It's not boat court or book court. It's boat court. Boat, boat court. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, uh, Basil. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Uh, <laughs> The uh, it's it's much easier um, live. That's what I've learned, <laughs> and because it's easier to improvise live, it's been. I have to say, it's been fun doing, you know, the visuals, um, and being able to have a background that's more complete than you can on stage. So, I learned that. Thank you, Alice. This is the last show of this run of Pulp Playhouse, but it's very likely that we'll do it again sometime. Yeah, yeah it, it's been, the first one was 30 years ago, Reg? 33. Uh, 33. 33. And that, yeah. Uh, there we are. Great, yes. Come and watch Boat Court. It'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you like the name, you'll love the show. Yeah. Dave, did you come up with the name first and then figured out what the show was? Uh, it came up in a, uh, in a, in a scene that, um, me and Ken were improvising. Uh, and basically the, the conceit is that if people are on a boat in the ocean, there's no way to bring them to justice unless you build a boat that's large enough to surround any boat. And it has a court on it. That has a court, it's gotta have a court. <laughs> yeah, hence boat court. Yeah, I would, I don't, you know, I should go back and see, I don't know if we ever uh if that show i for some reason i think the video of that show didn't it was corrupted but i would love to uh, you know go back and find just that moment where boatport was uh, was birthed as twere um dave has done such a wonderful job nurturing it into a real show which was <laughs> it's just wonderful to see Cassini, yes very much like love boat and judge judy robin not so much a tennis court no <laughs> Although boat court is large enough that it does have five tennis courts, yeah. Olympic sized. It does. Yeah. What is boat court prison like? <laughs> it's um, it's got a nautical theme, uh, and <laughs> the prisoners are all seasick. Yeah, you know it's like any prison. It's got gangs and you know corruption. God. <laughs> Think about the documentary Sea Spiracy. <laughs> Oh, great. Uh, maybe someone could commit a sin. On, okay, great. Uh, I think we're going to call it a night, you guys. How about that? Yes. Let's say goodbye That's to everyone. Good Yay. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you all for coming. Thank Thanks, everybody, everybody, for coming. Coming. See you soon. Yeah. <laughs> like next week, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> all right. Bye. -bye.